Uh, okay, good. Uh, uh, Mr. Bell, are you the only one going to be testifying? Yes, sir. Okay, so I'm going to have to swear you in, all right? Please raise your right hand, swear to tell the truth, tell the truth, nothing but the truth. I affirm, I affirm. Okay, good deal. Uh, who's here from the city? Tommy here? I'm here. Hey, Tom, can you please raise your right hand? Swear to tell the truth, tell the truth, nothing but the truth? Yes. Okay, I'm Wayne Miller, board member. Amy Rivera, board member. Ryan McSherry, board council. Philip Motto, board's administration. Deborah Richardson, board's administration. Jay Scoria, department license inspections. Thomas Rybikowski, city of Philadelphia, license and inspections. Okay, that's everybody. Uh, Tom, you want to start this off? Can we put All this right. in the record, sir? Oh, yes. I'm sorry, Phil. Please, please mm -hmm. put that in the record. Thank you. This is MI 2024 <laughs> for the property located at 5760 Hagerman Street. Good deal. Go ahead, Tom. So what we have is we have the property at uh, 50, 5760 Hagerman Street has been declared as unsafe by the department. It was, un it was declared unsafe for a fracture of exterior walls and a bulge uh, of the uh, exterior bricks. Uh, the appellant uh, as everybody has the uh, appeal information, it says all bricks are in place as mortar. No bricks are missing, no bearing weight uh, to cause collapse of the building. All bricks are solid. Um, the violation isn't for bricks, loose and missing bricks. Therefore, out of plumb. Uh, and the violation notice spells out northeast front side uh, fractured and bulged. In the interest of time, I'll go right to the inspector's photos that are part of the case record mm -hmm. that shows a fracture that uh, uh, looks like this is a corner property at mm -hmm. 5760 Hegerman. It's the end of the block. It's a corner property. Uh, and what we have is the exterior walls. These are photographs that were provided by the appellant. But... Tom, you're not sharing. Uh, yeah, you... Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> How about now? Uh, it's coming. <laughs> so it's Christmas, I know. <laughs> yeah, quicker than, than we'd like. Okay, we can see it. All right. Okay. So I'll, I'll uh Okay. So these are photographs. I'll uh, enlarge them a little bit so you can get a semblance of, of the property. Um, there we go. So 5760 Hagerman, it's corner property. These are photographs that were taken uh, December of 2023. You can see December 21st of 2023, there's a fracture that's along the exterior width of bricks. Um, that mortar has been installed on that fracture and it continued to open back up. So that shows that there is something going on with this corner property. It needs more than just mortar being uh, applied to this fracture. It's actually fracturing so much that it's actually breaking the bricks as it, as it moves. So it's not just running along the the, the mortar, uh, and it's a layman terms settlement crack. This is a crack that's actually happening inside the width of the bricks. So, uh, so that's the, there's a, there's a crack that's opening up right. If you can see my cursor, this is a photograph taken 1221 of 23. And then this is another photograph taken of the inspection on 2 6 of 2024. This is a photograph of two uh, on taken February 6 of 2024, where that fracture is still visible on both those both those areas or okay. both those, uh, those pictures. Um, and then another photograph on 8 5. Uh, 
and that was again taken August 5th of 2024. So what, uh, what the department is asking is that a engineer uh, report or permit be uh, obtained by the owner. If repairs are required, then uh, we would be asking for a permit to be uh, under review within 60 days. All right, uh, Mr. Bellamy, yes, what do you let's hear your side. Well, I know that I seen a fracture there and I didn't get an engineer. I talked to the engineer, but I'm willing to do whatever it takes to comply with the city and resolve this matter as soon as possible. Is 60 days good enough for you to get a permit? Sir? 60, could you have a permit within 60 days? Don't mean you have to start the work, but can you have a permit within 60 days? Yes, sir. I, th I think it's tangible. Okay. All right. You good with that, Tom? Yes, I'm sir. Good. Okay. All right, then you get a per you get a permit in 60 days to get the work started. Uh, Tom, anything else he has to do? Just has to get the engineer's report, and then if uh, if uh, there are whatever terms the engineer comes up with with the repair, uh, permit has to be under review within 60 days. Bobby, you good with that? Yes, sir. All right. Good luck. Congratulations. Thank get it done. Okay, thank you. All right, buddy. All yeah. right. Okay. That's Hagerman Street. Okay. Whenever you're prepared, sir, the matter is number five and number six. The appellant is present in the room. Number five and number six? Okay. Yes, sir. Five and six would be, all right, bear with me a second. All right, so there's two things of five and six on Newkirk Street. Yeah, that's correct, sir. Okay. All right, let's bring Newkirk Street in. And Ms. who's Karen here from Newkirk Street? I am. A Khalifa? Khalifa. Hi, how are you doing? Good. I'm fine, thank you. Are you going to be the only one testifying? Yes, yes, I am. Okay, could you please raise your right hand? Swear to tell the truth, tell the truth, nothing but the truth? Yes. Good. Tom? Yes. Can you raise your right hand? Swear to tell the truth, tell the truth, nothing but the truth? Yes. Okay, I'm Wayne Miller, board member. Amy Rivera, board member. Brad McSherry, board council. Philip Motto, boards administration. Deborah Richardson, Boards Administration. Jay Scurrier, Department of License and Inspections. Uh, Phil, you want to read both cases in or you want to do one at a time? Uh, I'll read them both in, sir. <laughs> okay. This is going to be MI 2024-004933 for 1922 North Newkirk Street and MI 2024-004934 for 1922 North Newkirk Street. Okay, Tom, you wanna to start us off? So for 1922 North Newkirk Street, the first matter on the docket today, MI 2024-004933 should be marked no action by the board in that this property was upgraded to uh, eminently dangerous, and that's what the appeal for uh, on the docket number six is. So this should be marked uh, 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 no action by the board because this case is essentially going to be closed referencing the other case. Okay. Okay. Fine. All right. We want to do the next right. case. Okay. Now, moving moving along to case number or on the docket number matter number six, uh, that is the eminently dangerous status on the property. Uh, I will share my screen and show photos of the property. Uh, okay. The appellant is is uh, 
And is it Miss Carrington? Yes. Okay, I don't want to mispronounce your name. I get it all. No, it's, so, you're fine. Um, so, Miss Carrington, it, it it appears that you're petitioning the board for a, for additional time to make the repairs, or at least yes. to get everything yeah. going. How much time yeah. are you looking for? Um, how much time do you uh, do you um do you allow? Well, when I show the board, I'll when I show the photos to the board, then I'll then I'll make my recommendation and we'll take it from there. All but right, no I'll problem. I'll share my screen now. All right, thank you. So this is a photograph taken of the property at 1922 North Newkirk Street. Um, and I'll enlarge the photograph a little bit more. And that's the front. These are the sides. This is when the property, you can see that there's a fracture that's opening up that's between the right-hand side wall and the, the front masonry wall. Also, it's visible by this on this photograph here. And we also have that the interior or the width of bricks that are exposed on the vacant so lot side are uh, deteriorating to the point that they're delaminating. And then you have on the other side, the stucco is the same, same situation. The brickwork is starting to de delaminate. <clears throat> Now, the other concern is it appears that this is a uh, tunnel alley, and we now have a fracture that is opening up in the back of the property. This was photographs taken uh, August, uh, July 11th of 2024. And then I'll go right to the eminently dangerous case that the inspector saw the deterioration and re reissued the case. So this is the rear rear bay of the property. You can see that the rear bay is starting to deteriorate. That it's that it's allowing something to penetrate or deterioration of the rear cantilever bay in the rear. And then these are photographs of the interior, or what the semblance of the interior, or what or absence of. And that's another photograph of this of the posting. Okay. Um, what well, is it eminently dangerous? Uh, the department designated as eminently dangerous. There are two cases that were issued on the property. It was originally issued an unsafe case, and then that unsafe case uh, was referenced in the notice in the inspector's notes that uh, he was upgrading it to eminently dangerous. Uh, the appellant appealed both with the same provisions that they were asking for time to, to uh, come into agreement on, on making the necessary repairs or at least have a permit under review. Uh, my representation to the board is we would like a permit uh, to be under review within 60 days. I really don't wanna move into the winter months uh, before with, uh, with, a, with this property. Um, was okay. the adjacent property also given a violation on the other side of that alley? Um, I know there's not a house there, but that is a shared alley, and the one wall is technically on the other neighbor's side. I'd have to do some digging on that, but I don't, uh, I don't have that in front of me. But okay. I, I could answer that. Okay. Uh, so I have a question, if I may. Um, Absolutely. Which, which you showed two different properties. Which property were you referring to? Uh, 
I'm actually going into the, the database now and I'll be able to answer your question in one minute. Her question, the way I understand it is, I was a little confused with the pictures too, because the first house shown had two doors implying that there was an apartment, but then the last house you showed was a different house. Yeah, that that's precisely the So actually the unsafe case, the photos that are on the unsafe case, which were the ones that I showed originally, are of oh, 19, 1928 North Newkirk. That is a different property. The, the, the second set of photographs is the property at 1922 uh, North Newkirk. And that is the one that is next to uh, what appears to be a uh, parking lot. Um, it is actually... So is that is not the one with the stucco on the side wall. That is the one with the stucco on the right hand side wall oh, and the uh and the lot, the black cyclone fencing in that uh in that photograph. I'll go back, I'll share my screen again and show the Please. photograph of the property. Um that that shares that is right up against what is Edward Gillen Elementary School. And I'll share my screen again to to uh, clearer the record up to show the photographs of the property itself. Please do, Tom. Share my screen again. Can everybody see my screen? Yes. So this is the rear bay of the property at 1922 North Newkirk. And then this is the frontage of the property at 1922 Newkirk. This is looking at the rear uh, where the, uh, the, the amount of overgrowth and the amount of uh, interior uh, uh, deterioration of the property itself. That's the building in question, Tom? This is the, the the property on the right is the property in 1922 Newkirk. Okay. This is taken from the from the side of the property uh, along the parking lot of that of the, the school. And then this is the amount of overgrowth that's in the rear of the property. This is the sticker. You can see that this was taken from the parking lot and I'll share my, I'll, I'll switch screens and you can see a, a Philly Atlas view of the property. But uh, this, this is the parking lot. You can see the amount of overgrowth that's in the rear of the property. Uh, and that's about it. Is the school to, to as I'm looking at it, to the left, is that the, the schoolyard? Yes. Uh -huh. Is, is that any danger at the back of the house to that school? I would say it is a uh, danger in that the, um, the, the property itself is there with all the overgrowth. Um, but I will share my screen and show you the Philly Atlas. Um, can everybody see this screen here? Yes. Yes. So this shows the elementary school and the uh, and the parking lot that's associated with it. Uh -huh. It looks like faculty and it's a, basically a parking lot that they use, not an assembly area. Uh, looks like the, the back of the, the school uses the assembly area right behind the school. Um, so I would say a permit would have to be obtained within 30 days. And is anyone living in that house, Ms. Carrington? 
No, nobody is living in it now. Okay. So I just uh, purchased it on security. So what's your point? What, uh, what you think you can do? Uh, Tom, Tom's recommending 30 days to get a permit to start the work on the house. So yes, um, well, since I got the 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 final notice violation, I've been actively trying to find contractors. I did, however, find someone yesterday, and she I I have a meeting scheduled for tomorrow night at six. Okay. So uh, hopefully, I is, can you know get everything resolved as quickly as possible. What you need to know, you have to have a licensed contractor. She's actually going. licensed because the okay. other people were not. So she oh. is, yes. Okay, very good. Very good. I was also asking for an engineer's report. Okay. So on the final notice violation, the first um on the the, the there were two separate violations. The one for 423, 2024, that's for a different property, correct? Uh it appears that they uh have the wrong photos uploaded. Uh, I would go with the case number that is written against your property. Um, case number CF2024073774. is the case that uh, references your property. The uh, unsafe case CF2024034416, that case will be ended uh, and it will reference the new case. So the four, uh, just for my clarification, nineteen the photos of nineteen twenty eight North New Kirk were incorrectly uploaded. Correct. Now that doesn't mean that there might not be a case on that other property. It's just that they didn't have the right photos in that in that case. But essentially, there's two cases that are open against your property. That one unsafe case will be closed, referencing the other case and the decision of the of this board today. Okay. So there's no action from us on uh, 1922 New Kirk Street unsafe. That's that's a different different house. We're uh, concentrating on uh, the second one, the ID case. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, when were these violations initially written? Uh, the unsafe case was initially written on. Four twenty three. April 20, uh, the notification was sent April 24th. The inspection took place April 23rd of okay. 2024. And Ms. Carrington, you said you just bought it? No, I actually purchased the property in 2016. And following oh. that, I secured it with windows and doors, made sure it was safe. And, you know, that that was it for the moment. Okay. Um, we recommend that you have... Uh, a contractor and a permit pulled within 30 days. It, okay. How about we say and permit under review? Permit under, re permit under review. Okay. So, we get a contractor, he'll he'll uh, pull a permit, he'll do have an engineer's report, the whole ball of wax. But you have to have a permit under review within 30 days. So what's the difference between pulling the permit and permit under review in 30 days? When the permit's under review... There could be a week or so of back and forth with the plans examiner and whoever submitted the permit. So we're not counting that time. That okay. Once the permit is submitted, that has to be within 30 days. And then it may take another two weeks for you to actually get the permit. Okay. And this is 30 working days or just 30 calendar days? 30 calendar days. Calendar day. Okay. All right. All right, if there's any questions you have afterwards, if you, talk, you can get a hold of uh, LNI, Tom, uh, if there's any other questions going through this. But uh, you just, the main thing is getting your contractor and getting started. Okay, uh, all right. If Ms. Carrington has any questions, she can contact me at the office number. I'll give her the number now. Yes, okay. yes, that would be great. Thank you. 215? Uh-huh. 686? Yes. 2483. And I'm sorry, what is what is your name again? Tom. Tom. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Okay, thank you. Good luck. Thank All you. right. Thank you. Okay. Good deal. Bye. Okay. All right.
Is there anyone else here? Yes, sir, Mr. Mill. We're ready on matter number two, 2002 Cater Street. Mr. Harris is present in the room. Okay, okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Hi, hey, Mr. Harris, are you the only one going to be testifying? Pardon me? Are you going to be the only one testifying? That's correct, yes. Okay, could you raise your right hand? Swear to tell the truth, tell the truth, not about the truth? That's, yes. Okay, Tom Robikowski, could you raise your right hand? Swear to tell the truth, tell the truth, nothing but the truth? Yes. I'm Wayne Miller, board member. Amy Rivera, board member. Ryan McSherry, board council. Philip Motto, board's administration. Jay Scoria, department license inspections. Thomas Robikowski, city of Philadelphia, license and inspections. Okay, uh, Tom, you wanna lead this case off? I'm sorry, Phil, put this into the record, pal. Thanks, sir. Right. MI 2024-004935 for the property located at 2002 Cater Street, K-A-T-E-R. Christopher Harris is the appellant. He's present in the room today, sir. Okay. Tom, lead us off. So what I have is I have the property at 2002 Cater Street has been declared as unsafe. Uh, it's for the issue of the front wall. Uh, the specific is... Uh, or the notation is deterioration and um, and bulge of the front wall. Um, just want to make sure that it's uh, essentially uh, it's it's hard to show a uh, bulge of a front wall from a 2D photo. Uh, but I'll uh, I'll share my screen and take it from there. Okay, go ahead. Can everyone see my photo? Uh, yes. Okay. So this is the property at 2002 Cater, uh, showing the exterior brickwork. The brickwork is showing signs of distress uh, in that it's starting to delaminate. Um, you can see that it's discolored. That's a front a picture of the front of the property with the posting being stuck in the mail slot. And there's another photograph of the of the property itself. You have where it appears that there has been some brickwork that has been done over the front doorway and that it looks like the brick uh, the that course of brickwork has been changed. We're essentially asking for a uh, engineering report on the front wall uh, and a permit to be obtained within 90 days. Uh, we we understand, but we uh, don't want to go into the winter months uh, with a bulge uh, and uh, possibly uh, um, unsafe condition with the front wall. Okay, uh, Chris, you want to tell us your side? Sure. Um... So the group understands I'm a licensed architect and this is my primary residence and I've owned the I've owned it since 2007 and I completed a full interior renovation um, that was completed in 2012 and it was a gut it was a gut renovation at, at which time I did not have the funds to to I'll call it upgrade the front but at that time the we were I achieved a certificate of occupancy and like i said the whole interior was fully cleaned out from plumbing electrical and i restructured the whole interior with a four inch lean that had gone to the back so the the interior of the building is i'll call it very safe and i can also attest to that the front wall has not moved since that time um you know since that completion 2012 you know i don't want to you know, it's 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 difficult. It's in a very this is in a fast changing area with a lot of contractors that want to. How do I say this? Um, they got a lot of work and they'll off. increase the price. Yeah, so okay. there's a lot of people that want to push things along there and potentially flag things on. Um, and I'm of the mindset that it is that it is safe and that I'd like to be able to have my own timeline to which to upgrade it. It's 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 been in its condition for it's now 12 years and the it's being maintained and it hasn't moved more 
And yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Am I just, I'm echoing. Um, and I would, it is my full intention to have the facade replaced. It's, there's just, for the last two and a half years, it's very difficult to find a contractor. And I and also just have some personal financial hardships that I'm just trying to balance everything in my life. I don't think anyone's saying you need to have it replaced. Um, it could be a matter of star bolts if it's just Boeing, some. Yeah, the um, the the challenge really with the star bolts is that the interior ceilings are all completed as part of that original renovation. It wasn't brought, um, I mean, sure, we can, we can complete that if that's what satisfies, I'll call it the neighbors. And, uh, but um, in my, my opinion, it's just really work that has nothing to do with safety. It just has to do with, um, I'll call it relative. This is in my professional opinion as an architect. And that it's, it extends beyond, um, it's, it's really just to keep my neighbors happy, so to speak. So there's ways to do it without star bolts too, but. Yeah, the challenge with the star bolts again is just I'd have to tear out a, a large. You can do it, but you don't have to tear out the ceiling. Yeah. But you need an engineer to tell you that. I'm, as an architect, you probably have engineers that you work with. Yes, I do. So, you, like, you might be able to get a report that says no, nothing's required and that it's safe, but you just have to prove that to L and I. Yeah, like I, like I, my, my representation to the board was we would like a engineering report or a mm -hmm. permit within 90 days. So essentially, if you get a report and a report, just like Ms. Rivera said, if the report comes back and says you need to, you need to do X, Y, Z to make the property safe, then yes, we would like a permit to be oh, under review. Okay. Now, I'm not saying that you have to have the permit issued and repairs 100% done in 90 days, just saying that one has to be under review. If the report comes back where it's safe, and there's no work that needs to be done. It's safe. Turn that over to the department, myself or Inspector De Sabato, and we would close the case out to that engineering report. Would Would you be satisfied with a um, with a permit that would allow for replacement within that ninety days? Be, so it would have to be done by the mix. It would have to be done under the term, terms of a make safe permit because you have an unsafe designation on the property. Your engineer. Would have to have would have to come up with a repair plan. If, like Ms. Rivera said, it was a star bolt situation, that's a mechanical design system. It'd have to be spelled out how far into the building it would go. If it was a brand new wall that was being uh, joined to the existing structure, the design professional would have to come up with how are you marrying it to the to the existing structure because don't forget you're tying it into an existing party wall. So how are you keeping that fire protection? Hearing construction, you're saying. No, well, how you're marrying the new to the, oh, God, just marrying the new to the, the old. Condition. Yes, I understand. Right. Huh? Okay. okay, Chris, you're either going to, you know, have your engineer take a look at it. If everything's good and he says it's safe, then just get us a letter and that'll take care of that. If not, he says you have to do something, then you got 90 days to uh to uh you know, get a permit and, and start doing something. And that'll be 90 days from today, the 26th? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay, well, okay. Uh, yes, uh, we are gonna do our best here. So- All please. right, Chris, good luck, man. Appreciate it. All right, buddy. We have no other applicants. I would say um, the next case would be Mifflin Street, right? We we have no appellants for either Mifflin Street or Green Street. I uh, noticed okay, they're the last above. two uh, violations, right? And then yes, the sir. next two are Howard and Chestnut Street. That's correct. Okay. Uh, so we smoke them if you got them. You want to do anything? You want to get things squared away, Abe, for the first couple of cases we had? Yes, but we should stop the recording for now. Okay. Stop. I'm not sure. Oh, there's... Okay. Uh, we have two cases here. We'll start out with uh, 1518 Mifflin Street. 
they were supposed to be here at one o'clock. It is now 10 minutes to two. So we're going to hear the cases. Um, all right. Uh, my name is Wayne Miller, board member. Amy Rivera, board member. Ryan McSherry, board council. Philip Motto, board's administration. Deborah Richardson, board's administration. Okay. Um, Tom, can you raise your right hand? Swear to tell the truth, tell the truth, nothing but the truth. Yes. Okay. Bill, you want to read that into the record? Yes, sir. This is MI 2022-005696. This is That's for the good. property located at 1518 Mifflin Street. The appellant is Carmen Cuervo. There is no one named Carmen Cuervo in the meeting room or in the waiting room. Service was made to that appellant, but no one is here. Okay, Tom, can you give us a rundown on this building? This is a lot like the other case. The front wall is bulged. Um, again, it's very hard to show a bulged wall in a 2D format, um, but essentially at the conclusion after I show the photographs uh, of the property, it's a middle of a row at 1518 Mifflin. Uh, we would ask for a uh, engineer, uh, engineering report and permit, uh, depending upon that report, uh, within 90 days, and I'll share my screen. Can everybody see my screen? Yes. So 1518 Mifflin is the one with the glass storm door. Got it. That's a picture of the posting. And that, again, that's a picture of the front of the property. This is a picture of the front. Uh, this is it's a three-story uh, row home at 1518 Mifflin. Uh, essentially, we have uh, the width of bricks is bulged out. It's uh, leaning towards the towards the street, and that's that's what I got for the front wall. Is there any bricks falling or anything, Tom? No, they're not okay. falling. They're just out of plumb. Uh, okay. And we just need an, a, we need a, uh, 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 they were deemed unsafe by the area inspector and we just mm -hmm. need the, uh, the, the report and the associated permit if work is, is required. Okay. Okay. And that is, uh, 90 days. That's yes. That's my representation. Okay. And I'm, I'm good with it. Hey, are you good with it? Yeah. That's fine. Okay. I think, I think we should just uh, just have on the record from from board administration that uh, the uh, appellant is is not here, and just we just put on the record that the uh, date notice was sent, where notice was sent to. Um, yeah, the, the, the address. Mm -hmm. I'll have to okay. give me just a second. I'll have to get the date that it was sent to and sure. where it was sent. Uh, the by by let's see the violation. Date was 9 9 2022. The appeal date was 9 2022. 22. Is that right? Yes, there was a backlog to get to us. <laughs> wow. I know they shut the city down, but we were. <laughs> I just remember that hospital job that we all did. Do you remember that? We were up it was to like, like a nine day, six hour a day. Yeah. Oh, pen? Yeah. The, well, pen we're, oh, we're, we're the one building to the next? Yeah. And then you want to put the fire department out front? Yeah, it was crazy. Oh, that <laughs> must have cost them $50 million to, to trade. Man, all the stuff that they did, cutting the building in half. But they never had to do it. They never did. They never moved one person into it. Yeah. yeah. Right. They had, to, they had to tie up every sprinkler head in the whole place. Yes. Were in flex heads. Uh, yes, Bill. What right, I found with the cases. The next case. I'm sorry. Please. I just wanted to give just an update on the one we were talking about. Yes. Is notice was first sent on the 5th for the original date on the 8th, and then it was sent again on the 21st for today. Uh, both were sent to the email that the appellant listed in their uh, appeal form. Okay. Fine. Good deal. Thank you. All right. Okay, we'll move along to the next one. Okay. Uh, the next one is 1511 Green Street. The appellant is not here. They were supposed to be here at one o'clock. 
so we're going to go through the process. Uh, Tom, you'll be uh, on this. Could you please raise your right hand? Swear to tell the truth, told truth, nothing but the truth. Yes. Okay. I'm Wayne Miller, board member. Amy Rivera, board member. Ryan McSherry, board council. Philip Motto, board's administration. Jay Scalia, Department of License Inspections. Thomas okay. Rabikowski, City of Philadelphia License Board's Administration. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Deb. Say okay. it again, Deb. Fine. Okay. Deborah Richardson, Board's Administration. Good deal. Phil, can you read the case into uh, the record, please? Yes, sir. This is MI 2024 000 930 for the property 1511 Green Street. The appellant is Joe Hill. There's no one in the waiting room nor in the hearing room with that name. Service was made to the appellant on August 5th and August 21st, indicating the hearing. Both the notices were sent to the email the appellant provided in the actual appeal form. Okay, once again, we're going to go continue with the case. The appellant is not here for 1511 Green Street. Uh, Tom, could you give us uh, your take on this matter? Uh, the appellant is, uh, I'm a little confused on this one because uh, this was actually adjudicated by the board already. Uh, there was a uh, hearing uh, held at the uh, in front of this uh, this board on February 22nd of 2024, where this matter was continued. Uh, both myself and Inspector De Sabato met the appellant out on uh, out at the location, and then this hearing was rescheduled for the next hearing date, which would have been March 7th. That said. The uh, owner did supply an engineering report to the department. The department has closed out this unsafe yeah. case. So in long story short, there's no action by the board. Okay. No action by the board of Green Street. Uh, okay. We're good with that. Aim. It's closed. It's closed. Okay. All right. That's the end of the violations. And... Uh... They're joining now, sir. Okay. okay. Everybody here from fifteen seventeen Chestnut. Yes. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Hello, how you doing? What we got to do is swear you guys in. Um, so, um, is Adam, you're the owner, right? I am, yes. Are you going to be testifying, Adam? Uh, I don't think so, unless there's any specific questions, but... Okay, uh, raise your hand anyway. Uh, swear to tell the truth, tell the truth, talk about the truth. I do, yes. Okay. Anybody else going to do your testifying for you? Yes, uh, I have uh, Shimmy Zakin, our architect, uh, on here. Okay, uh, the next two guys, could you give me your full name and raise your right hand one at a time? Yep, my name is Shane okay. And uh, uh, Swear to tell the truth, tell the truth, nothing but the truth. Yes, yes okay. I do. Uh, my name is uh, Christopher Purefoy. Okay, Christopher, would you please raise your right hand, swear to tell the truth, tell the truth, nothing but the truth? I do. Okay. Excuse and that, me, uh, pardon oh, me, I'm sorry. Reporter. Yeah, can everybody spell their last name? Thank okay. you. Uh, mine or, or, or Chris? Adams and Chris's. Okay. So my, mine is uh, Adam, last name is Zaken, Z A K E N. Okay. Next guy. My name is Shim Sean, S H I M S H O N. As an MC, and the last name is Zakin, Z as in zebra, A K I N. Okay. Uh, and my last name is Purifoy, and that's spelled P E U R I F O Y. Okay. And what that's is your first name? Uh, Christopher. Chris. Okay. That's everybody, right? For this case. For this case, yes. Okay. I'm Wayne Miller, board member. Amy Rivera, board member. John Dimes, fire code. Ryan McSherry, board council. 
Philip Motto, Boards Administration. Deborah Richardson, Boards Administration. Jay Scoria, Department of License Inspections. Phil, could you read it into the record? Yes, sir. This is MI 2024-005-286 for the property located at 1517 Chestnut Street. Shimshan Zakin is the appellant. He's present in the room. Okay, whoever's going to present the case, go ahead. Uh, should I uh, share the screen or you want to share your... Absolutely. 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 Great. Second, please. Seventeen chestnut. All right. Okay, everyone can see the screen. Yes, we can. Perfect. So it is an existing uh, property uh, stretching from uh, um, Chestnut Street all the way to, um, um, uh, it's always not here. Can you help, Adam? Yeah. Uh, Rainstead. Yeah. Rainstead. Rainstead. Yeah, Rainstead. Yeah, Rainstead. It's an existing uh, uh, a 3A constructed building, uh, masonry walls with steel uh, structure and a uh, real 3 by 12 um, uh, joists, wood joists, and uh, decking. I'm sorry. Someone is talking in the background at the same time. It's pretty hard. This is the court it's... reporter. It appears that Mr. Agus is here. Oh. Okay, yeah. good. Let's try to be on mute on because it's it's hard for me to concentrate. Uh, so we are proposing uh, an alteration to an existing building where the alteration includes um, the renovation of the interior of the first floor and second floor, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth floor, converting the first floor into um, a lobby at the, in the back from rent speed and uh, another entrance uh, uh, from Chestnut Street. So we have two means of egress, uh, the interior elevator and stairs cases. Um, and you can see that on the first floor plan. Um, also with the, 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 the proposed stairs tower and elevator will go all the way down to the basement to serve the basement, which will be uh, solely used for uh, uh, storage and utilities, and uh, uh, maybe in the future, part of the commercial space. Uh, second floor, we have uh, two units with uh, amenity spaces. On the third, fourth, and the, on the third floor, we have three units where we open an, um, a courtyard in the middle of the um, building open to the sky space. So when you stand here, you look up, you see sky by removing sections of the floors and uh, by that allowing for air and light into those uh, uh, units in the middle of the property. It's been done many times uh, on different other uh, projects we did in the past uh, very successfully. Um, so we have three units per floor from the third, fourth, fifth floor, where the sixth floor has the same units, but with um, an addition for seventh floor, which is really a small section of uh, a bedroom suite uh, to those units. So uh, the ex accessing this uh, uh, addition is only inside within the interior of, of the units located on the sixth floor, 602 and 601. So we only have two units on the sixth floor versus three on the floors below. Um, there is also a small uh, deck, as you can see, and the elevator and the stairs means of egress stretches all the way up to provide a uh, necessary access uh, from, two, two means of uh, access from uh, the roof down to, uh, to the street. Um, as I said, the building is constructed of uh, um, 
it's a, a 3A uh, type, so it has um, combustible materials which trigger a refusal. Uh, I'll go to the section because it's going to be more, accurate, more more clear for everyone. Um, the third floor will be, as required, completely removed and constructed as a three-hour uh, podium separation, separating um, two different types of constructions. But that's what normally happens. Um, if we're all familiar with the um, 2B over the 1A construction, where the podium separating uh, um, uh, framing uh, construction above, where below no combustible material is allowed. Since the first floor deck and the second floor deck exist, and they made of three by 12, uh, all the uh, solid lumber uh, between uh, steel, uh, Structure steel beams running between the two masonry walls. This requires um, um, some sort of a treatment. Um, there is uh, in section uh, um, 603.121, there is an exception which I would like to bring up here. And this will allow a sprayed fire resistance material in infra, uh, into mass and in a, uh, a mastic fire resistant coating determined on the basis of a fire resistance test in accordance with section 7032. Um, so we are, we sent to the board and we have it uh, today with us a letter from an engineer to support our proposed uh, uh, design to treat the second, the first floor deck and the second floor deck with fire treatment, uh, with fire spray to all the wood uh, or combustible uh, um, um, and the non-combustible elements of the structure. Besides that, we will have jeep creek uh, layer on top of the deck and double layer of uh, fire rated uh, uh, five eight sheetrock with the resilient channel at the bottom of the ceiling. With that, we're creating two two hour rated um, assemblies um, on the second and on the first floor. Uh, with this letter, uh, we're hoping that the board will be able to grant our permission to our request to um, not remove. Uh, the first floor and the second floor, which will create uh, a huge expense and more of that, a great challenge to do so uh, in uh, in this location. I'm happy to answer any questions. We don't have a copy of that letter. <laughs> uh, we have uh, we have sent it uh, uh, last week, mm -hmm. uh, so you should have this and the full set of uh, drawing. Yeah. You can see who I sent it to. Yeah, we sent it to um, Deborah. Deborah Richard, Richard Song. Um, that could be my issue. Maybe I didn't download it. I just didn't see it. Okay. So she would forward it to the board. But it is. Queen, do you have it? No, I don't have it. So, um, um, I mean, it's right here and it's presented. I'm happy to just keep it on the screen for you to quickly uh, review it. But I think we'd rather have a copy of it. Um, yeah, that's not a problem. Um, uh, I can try to see if Deb can find it and send it over real quick. Give me just a second. We did send it also to Phil Moto. Who is Phil Moto? He just spoke. That's Phil. Well, that's, he just that's spoke. me. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. So you should be who, You should have it then. Okay. Who did the email come from? It came from Daniel. Uh, Perfect. 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 I'm sorry. From Daniel and Atrium Design Group .com. Okay, thank you. Hey, Charles, I'm going to get something sent over by the board. Uh, Wayne, I have it. I have it. And obviously, I mean, it's obvious, but I want to uh, uh, re emphasize that the, the building will be fully sprinkled, of course, with um, 
file alarm system as required by code. Those were forwarded to you on 822. Did you find them? I, I found it. Um, can we get L and I's take on all this? Um, yeah, so oh, I was looking at the information. I mean, for it to be considered a split, split construction type, you would require uh, it to be type 1A construction below the three hour. Like Shimmy said, um, you know, you can't have any combustible material there. Even the type uh, 3A above, that's that's limited to six stories, sorry, five stories above grade, whereas this is seven. So if you were to give a variance, you would have to give a variance for both the type 1A providing combustible material and the type 2A, type 3A construction uh, being over five stories above grade. So there's two major refusals for these. Um, unfortunately, because of the addition that causes the issue and also the change in occupancy classification from, I think it was previously a business and now it's residential occupancy. But I, I must correct here. We have only four stories above the podium. Uh, Sorry, what... it's um, from what I, from what I've read on the refusal, um, it looks like the R2 was from the second to the seventh floor. Right. To, correct. But the podium, this, the three hour oh, separation the so, yeah. happens to uh, happens on the third floor. So yeah. is the residential not provided on the second? Um, on the second, we do have resident, two, two residential units. Okay. Yeah, then the refusal was. I apologize. I thought the three hour was provided above the first floor level. Either way, the type type three construction is only limited to five stories. So right. five stories, three. Yeah, yeah, five stories, which is three, three, five stories above the above the separation, the podium. I thought the separation was at the first floor level. That's why. Uh -huh. I don't know, I That's why. But regarding the addition, I just want again to emphasize the addition size. The addition is a small portion that is only related to a bedroom suite of the right. floor but unit. We, well, we still consider that a story Absolutely. based on the definition. It's, it's important to understand the size. And mm -hmm. the... Mm -hmm. So, Jason, is that still a valid refusal item or? Technically, it's still above grade. So um, let me double check something in commentary and I'll get back to you on that one. Okay. And John Dimes, how do you feel about the treated wood construction? I mean, podium. Is, or is the historically, I, I mean, is that equal to or better than having being non combustible? Probably not. Uh, and buildings are getting taller and I mean as far as with wood construction and podium and stuff like that minusing my personal opinion and stuff like that I, 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 always, I always think buildings should be built to code unless the code allows the exception so th th this comes down to what they're proposing is it equal to or better than a non possible materials and, and I would say probably not it does help obviously you rather have it treated uh, than not treat it, but I, I couldn't say with any certainty it's just as good. And remember, this is an existing building. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's an existing building that you're putting what, four floors on top of, so. Well, the existing is six stories. We're just putting... Yeah. We're we just adding uh, two... Yeah. Uh, Almost mezzanine uh, size uh, um, additions. Uh, we would never be in front of this board for a new construction building, obviously. And I agree with you that building should be constructed uh, to code. Is there a sprinkler system in there now? Uh, it's, uh, I don't know if you Is there a sprinkler system in there now? 
There is a sprinkler system that occupies the basement yeah, and the first it's floor, it's um, but it does not. It does not encompass the uh, above floors right now. And do you uh, are you going to sprinkle above floors? Yeah, of course. The whole building will be fully sprinklered. What type of sprinkler system? Uh, it'll be whatever the uh, the code is. We haven't had them drawn up yet. The uh, sprinkler plans are actually in the process of drawing them up now. I, it uh, should be a 13 system, I believe, right? I'm sorry, this is the court reporter. I'm having difficulty understanding what's being said. Uh, I'm asking, does it call for a 13 system in this building? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I was going to say, Mr. Zakin, your audio is, is breaking up. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But yeah, the, the, the plans call for uh, NFBA 13's reckless system. Okay. Can you hear me better now? Yeah, yes. we can hear you a lot better now. Yeah. Oh, sorry about that. Something did happen, but here I'm showing you that on the permit set, we are identifying um, system 13. Okay. Uh, to answer your question, Amy, the reason why the examiner referenced that was because the 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 bottom portion technically wasn't considered a type 1A construction. That's why the examiner put that refusal in. Yes, that's why I referenced the high. Yep. Yes. What does that mean, J uh, Jace? What I'm saying is, so there, if they had a compliant type 1A construction on the first and second floor level, that second refusal that they referenced for uh, the, the last refusal he referenced wouldn't apply, but because they don't provide a compliant type 1A construction on that bottom portion of the building, that's why he considered R2 occupancy to be on, uh, to be at the seventh floor level. So that's why both refusals would apply for this specific uh, configuration. And, and, and is there only a six-story building? No, it's a seven-story building technically because they don't provide a Type One A construction the first and second floor level. Okay. Currently, it's a six-story building. Right. Currently, it's a six-story building. They're proposing an addition, and that's causing it to be a seven-story building. So I'm I'm quickly going through the fire protection engineer's letter and they talk about putting a mastiff or intermittent paint or coating over it but i don't see any specifics like is there a ul rating for what they're what you're proposing i don't even see what you're proposing it just says that you should be able to do it well um so we we got this letter after getting the refusal in response to the refusal. Um, his recommendations were to that we would be allowed to use these spray uh, materials to get the two hour rating. And um, so we have not yet adjusted and sent the exact you know system, um, but essentially to get that allowed that because either way, even if we propose something, uh, specific yeah we're happy to approach them and uh, get for them uh, the exact specific product they are recommending right. and uh, uh, the related uh, um, tests that applies to that Essentially, the system is is what we have proposed on this drawing is is two layers of five eighths 
some below, um, get created above. And in addition to that, we would spray, uh, you spray from, or spray fire protection on the wood or to, up to a two hour rating, which I believe, you know, there's depending on the product you're using is there's a certain thickness that's required to get to our rating. And of course on the steel, it would be a three hour rating, but. Would that suffice, Jace, if they did that? That can look up our code now. Okay. What would they have to do to make it work? They have to get rid of the combustible framing and make it a type 1A construction in the first so and second floor level. And that's what they're trying not to do because of yeah, the and that's expenses. existing. Is that existing wood in there? Yes, it's a real three by twelve, uh, the old three by twelve lumber, which obviously has more. Uh, yeah, it's not right. I know it. Not as level of the inch and a half by eleven and a quarter, or two by twelve of today. Uh, Amy, you want to call this? Okay. Ted's here. We uh, okay. Uh, after looking at the review of it, we do not think that uh, this is equal to or better than uh, the construction. Uh, what it what it would fall for. Uh, what what and that we think that the wood is not sufficient enough. It should be concrete. So. Um, that's that's our findings uh, from Amy and myself, uh, and we can go from there. You guys, have anything anything else you want to say about it? I mean, are there any stipulations or suggestions that that maybe you guys could put forward to still allow uh, the wood to remain? Because to um, it just it's honestly a hardship in terms of budgeting uh, the project to to rip out all the wood, uh, eliminate it, uh, put in bar joists, pour the concrete. Um, and I mean, according to the engineers, we're really getting to a, to, to a similar place. Um, I mean, maybe it's not the same as non-combustible, but with the building being fully sprinklered and having the gypsum and having the fire rating around the wood, and having uh, 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 the drywall uh, barrier between each floor, we're in a similar range of rating. Um, so is there potentially a stipulation that you guys could put on it or, or, or something of a, uh, maybe a level to the um, uh, uh, fire, uh, fire rating around the wood? Um, That's what we're proposing basically uh, to, um, protect the wood uh, but if the board is not able to grant it um, would the board consider um, that it's, if we will replace the second floor which is the floor that separates between two functions between commercial use and residential use but keep the original first floor um, uh, deck with the proposed treatment that we are proposing between the commercial and the basement. At least it helps with 50% uh, of uh, the um, extreme cost of replacement of the deck. But at least we, we, it, it makes sense because the, um, the separation between residential and commercial, um, I, I see the concern about that, but but within the commercial space, within the first floor and basement, um, maybe there is um, more tolerance over there to accept our proposed uh, treatment. Jace, I don't want to put you on the spot. Does that take away any of the refusal? No.
I just think we're, we're really not comfortable with that with that old wood construction being in there. Even if you try to give it a rating, it's still a combustible material where there's not supposed to be a combustible material. And I, I think what's being proposed is not equal or better. Okay. Um, that's, I, I feel the same way, Aim. I, 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 and I don't know any other way of doing it. Think, you know, to make it equal or better. Uh, so I guess uh, um, there is not much that we can um, propose here um, to find some sort of a compromise resolution. Um, Um, anything else? I I don't know of anything else. Uh, anybody else? Dimes, Jane, or uh, Jace? I don't have anything else except I, we're, we're not comfortable with that. I understand. Okay. It's pretty clear. All, All right, right, guys. We're, we're have a good we thank you for uh, the time. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Sorry. Sure. Um, do we have Howard Street here? Yes, I yeah. believe we do. Yes. Okay. Yep, 1813. Uh. Okay. Next case, eighteen thirteen Howard Street. Okay. Yes. All right. Let's open this baby up. Bear with me one second. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right, how many people do we have for the next case? Just two, Calvin. Just two is? Okay. Yeah. Uh, are both of you going to be testifying? It's just I will be. Just you will be? Okay. Yeah. All right, uh, are you a lawyer? Uh, I am the architect. Okay, well, that's not a lawyer. <laughs> no. <laughs> please, please, raise, please raise your right hand, swear to tell the truth, tell the truth, nothing but the truth. I swear. Okay, I'm Wayne Miller, board member. Amy Rivera, board member. John Dimes, fire code. Ramy Cherry, board council. Philip Motto, boards administration. Jonathan. Jace Scoria, department based on inspections. Jonathan Manza, architect, Ocean News Architecture. Okay. Bill, could you read that into the uh, record? Yes, sir. This is MI 2024-005288 for the property 1813 North Howard Street. Jonathan Manza is present in the room today and he's going to present the case to you, sir. Okay. Whoever's going to present the case, go ahead. Okay. Uh, let me share my screen. Okay. So uh, you all can see the building section? Yes. Okay. So... 1813 Howard. It is a uh, fully sprinklered um, residential multifamily building. It is five stories, one, two, three, four, five stories of 3B combustible construction over one story of 1A construction with a three hour horizontal podium separation at the second floor level. Um, our uh, agenda here today is particularly about the two fire stairs um, which are you can see here on the left on the right it goes to a partial cellar and then the one on the right just goes straight outside it's above that horizontal podium separation line it's uh, wood combustible construction consistent with 3b uh, and previously it was non-combustible metal stairs below uh, we are here today because of uh, the project is currently under construction. Uh, I believe it was originally uh, 
the permit was originally received to wrap before the pandemic. Uh, so because of uh, cost implications, uh, the client, our client was having issues with, with having such a small amount of non-combustible stair within the stair tower uh, pan out compared to the, when it's open up to the rest of the wooden stair. So we submitted a permit amendment to change just on the one floor plan, the stair two here, which exits out one story of that stair, and then stair one, which connects first floor, and you can see a partial cellar here. Uh, so two stories of that stair. Um, our rationale is we were providing equally, or we're providing better construction by following what the later additions of the building code allow for, which currently the 2018 stipulates that if you're in 1A, it has to be non-combustible. If you're uh, 3, you're allowed combustible. Um, later additions of the code recognize that we have a special condition here where you have an intercommunicating stair. Um, and the point of it is to keep the fire out of the stair rather than having spread within the stair. So we propose as part of our amendment to provide uh, three hour walls around the stair. Um, but at the stair towers itself, it's 12 inches thick of concrete. And then where we're exiting, it's a uh, three hour uh, drywall metal stud partition, which you can see here, this is from the 2021 IBC where it specifically allows interior exit stairways um, when the building above is type three, which we are, and it's enclosed by three operated construction. The rationale being we're essentially extending that horizontal building separation around the stair. So the stair itself is part fully within the upper building and within the combustible building. And uh, yeah, and that, that's the end of our argument. Jace, is this um, the same condition we've seen before? Yep. This is the condition that was approved by the ICC. We got the determination from them. All right, so this would be stair number one coming from the cellar to the second floor? It is, it's both stairs. Stair, right. stair number one is in the cellar and the first floor. Stair number two is just on the first floor. Okay. And that stair number one goes out to the outside? Correct. And where you're, what you're seeing right here, you are not above, uh, let me go to the cellar. You are not above occupied space. It's all slab on grade there. Okay. Same same with here where you're exiting uh, through the lobby. You can directly see the outside. That's all slab on grade as well. There's no space below. You said it was all protected with that three hour, right? Correct. Yep. Three hour, the second floor, it's a 15 inch concrete slab and the, the walls of the uh, stair towers themselves are 12 inches concrete. Yep. So yeah, the, the board would, if the board were to grant the variances, it's only because you're referencing a code section from 2021, which we haven't adopted yet. Right. And, Aim, we, we, we gave this grant, we granted this before? Yes, I'm okay with it. Okay, all right, me too. All right, guys, good luck. Thank you very much. Stop recording.